going to talk about quince. Quince is a, as you see, a very bumpy, ugly looking, sort of pear shaped fruit. It's actually not something that you normally can eat straight. There are um, a few different varieties of it, and I've heard some of them are actually ones that you can eat raw, but I'm guessing this is probably not one of those varieties because it's more common to find one that you can't eat raw. It's the only fruit that is part of the Cydonia genus, which is uh, part of the same family as this thing. It's an apple. It can be added to a lot of dishes, like uh, apple dishes. You can put in like apple pie or apple sauce, and it's supposed to add like an extra kind of like flavor to it. Uh, I believe they're like more sour than apples, so to like you know kind of like amp it up a little bit. Uh, it is very common in jams and jellies and and things like that because you actually the quince has a lot of pectin in it. I'm gonna make something called quince cheese. And in, um, it's something that's popular in you know, areas of Europe and also in South America where they call it Dolce de Membrillo. It's uh, like a similar thing to this. This is um, guava paste. It's basically just kind of like a block of, of guava and sugar kind of like solidified into like a jam. But it's it's got like a really like rubbery, like, thick texture. It's kind of like if you were to kind of combine, uh, combine, like, a jelly and a jello together. It's like a very firm jam. You don't spread it, you actually slice it. So here's a little slice of quince, just to get an idea of, like, what the flavor is, um, before cooking. It smells like a green apple. It's not bad, actually. I'm surprised. Um, I was actually expecting to, this to be like really astringent and like awful, but it tastes good. Um, it tastes very similar to an apple, but more like a green apple, and it's more sour. And this is a pretty uh, time-consuming process. I mean, I'm gonna try to save corners a little bit by um, by not peeling it and and stuff like that. But it still is going to take probably like an hour to cook, and then another like a few hours to um, to complete. I think you have, to, you have to like dry it out. So we'll see how long it takes. But this is like a full day, basically. Luckily, I don't have anything better to do today, so this is a uh, perfect time. My instructions say just to kind of coarsely chop it. I think this will just make it cook faster. So next, I'm going to add some water, and what I'm going to do is just have it just covering the quince. So I'm going to turn on the heat and bring it to a boil. And once it starts boiling, you keep it going for about an hour or at least until the uh, the fruit is until the fruit is soft. So some recipes say 30 minutes, some say an hour. So I'm gonna see how it is at 30 and then go from there. Okay, I took the cores and I put them inside this strainer and put them inside the pot just to get out like a little extra pectin. The um, the fruit itself smells kind of like, like pears. 
if you were to make like um, like a baked pear dish or maybe like a baked apple dish, like that sort of smell, which makes sense. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just straining out the fruit. Next up, puree. I've pureed this to the consistency of like baby food. It's like really, really fine. And next you need to like re-measure the puree and add it back to the pot. So I'm just gonna do this a uh, little bit by little bit. I measured a cup and a half of puree. So I'm gonna put in a cup and a half of sugar. I'm going to turn on the heat to medium and stir. And what you do is you stir it until the sugar gets dissolved into the quince puree. Now that the sugar has been incorporated, I'm going to take a cover, put that on there, and put it on simmer. Okay. Now this is supposed to sit here for, well, depending on the recipe, either an hour and a half to three hours. So it's a long time. So let's take a look at this. Now, I haven't just left this for an hour and a half. I've been coming back like every few minutes to stir it. That way it doesn't burn to the bottom. Here's what we're looking for. You want to be able to draw a line with the spoon where it leaves a trail. So let's try that. Yeah, that's, I think that counts. And you also want it to kind of like adhere to the spoon. Hmm. That is partially there. I think what I'm gonna do is actually leave this in for another half an hour just to see what happens. Let's take a look at what's inside. Yeah, that looks a lot more done. It's much browner and... Yeah, much thicker too. That's not... like. Let's give it the spoon drip test. Yeah, it's gotten much, much thicker, so I think we are done. So this is just going directly into a greased pan. If you have parchment paper or... Uh, even like wax paper, grease that and put that in instead because I think that would probably be a good idea. What I'm going to do next is let this cool. So I'm just going to leave this here on the counter. We are cool. It actually is already pretty firm. I think that even as it is now, this is pretty close to the right, uh, the right consistency as, as it should be. But there is another step, another long, arduous step, where you dry it. You set the oven to the lowest setting. For me, it's 200. If you've got less than that, that's probably a good thing. And you put that right inside. And what you want to do is dry it for about an hour and a half. Now, because I... I'm using an oven that doesn't have a drying setting and it's relatively high. Here, maybe I can do a little lower. Yeah, because my setting is pretty high. I'm actually going to leave this cracked open. That way um, air can get in and help draw out the moisture a little bit. It's like if you were going to like try to make like dried fruit or something. It does feel firmer. Um, this is, I mean, it feels like rubber, like I'm punching a tire. I was kind of worried about it because uh, it's such a sticky substance that it would stick to the pan, but I did grease it pretty well, so take a look at this. Super easy. There you go. It's a little greasy, but um, that came out pretty well. Ta da! It is done. I. Uh, just put this in uh, long enough for it to get cold, maybe like a couple hours. It is nice and firm now. It's like rubber. Uh, I cut off like a little chunk of it and it, I mean, it looks perfect. Uh, 
That's good. It tastes like dried fruit, but with like the texture of like a fruit roll up. If you were to do this with just like apples, I think that it probably would just taste like sugar. But because quince is not like super sweet and it's got a sour element to it, this works out pretty well. A lot of the recipes I've been seeing for quince cheese actually called for vanilla beans and lemon juice. I didn't put that in there. Um, I think that if you put that in here, it probably would taste better. But just straight like this with just quince is also pretty good. So if you've made this, now that you have it, what do you do with it? Well, you can put it on sandwiches. It's really good. You can use it kind of like in place of like jam, but instead of you know spreading it, you cut it. So the first time I had anything like this was actually guava paste, and I had that at a uh, a restaurant in Miami. It was like a Cuban restaurant, and how they served it was between two pieces of this soft cheese. I'm using queso uh, de frere, which is like a frying cheese, but it was like another type of like fresh cheese. That is delicious. Um, actually, like, if you're having like a party, and you've got like a cheese plate and crackers and stuff like that, make some of this stuff. Or if you can't make it, buy it or buy guava paste or something. But this is like, it's a nice thing to have like as an accompaniment to cheese or an accompaniment to bread. I'd say like, and it's nice that you can kind of like slice it like you can cheese, so you can kind of layer it pretty well. Uh, I like this. I think I would actually make this again and um, serve it like at a party or bring it to a party. It's just kind of like a very like unexpected thing, but it's interesting and it's tasty. And this is like a fun thing to do. It's totally not worth it like monetarily or time-wise. You can go to the store and buy like a brick of guava paste for like a dollar or two. This stuff takes, takes all day. It's very expensive. It's very time consuming. Uh, you use gas. You gotta kind of watch the stove. It takes a lot of work, but honestly, I'm still glad that I did it. I, I wasn't sure exactly what to do with my quince, and I think this was a good solution to it. So if you got a quince, try making quince cheese, try try making quince jam or bake with it. It's got a lot of good uses, and it's got like an interesting flavor. But uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about quince. So thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, don't click out on the window just yet, okay? Listen to me for one second. I just want to take a quick moment and tell you about my Patreon page that I just started. This is a way for fans of my series to help contribute and make my show even greater and to expand on content, get new videos, and give you some cool bonuses and rewards. So if you have a moment, just click on this video right here, click on me, and it'll, be, it'll take you to my Patreon page where you can learn more. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye. I, I made this video too long. Um, yeah, you can, if you don't want to go to the Patreon page, it's okay. Um, you can also click on one of these fruit videos. There's, there's one over here. You can go to the, the next episode and you can go down over here to go to the last week's episode and yeah well yeah sub subscribe subscribing is, is helpful and um, like it like it's good L liking it is good um, and leave a comment if you want to leave a comment you know tell me what you think if you liked it you hated it yeah um, okay that's it bye bye <laughs>